In this tutorial, there will be two parts, a basic and advanced airlock. While I explain, I'll make an airtight base for these examples. In the airlock, there are two chips you'll be able to put into the console, basic and advanced. The basic airlock will ensure an atmosphere is protected from a vacuum. This is great for the moon as it will protect the base's atmosphere from the moon's vacuum. The advanced airlock will separate two atmospheres from each other. This is great for a planet such as Mars as it will protect the base's atmosphere from the planet's atmosphere. First, I'll cover the basic airlock. Here, I'm using the glass doors. Composite doors work as well, although be sure to check the stationer's wiki as the composite door can withstand higher pressure. Typically, you won't have to worry about it unless you're on Venus, which has a pressure of 239 kPa. Before we continue, I'll have to explain how a few components work. First is the active vent. It has two settings. The right button turns it off and on. The left button dictates if air flows into the attached pipe network or out of the attached pipe network. Active vents have two attachment points. The top, which pipes can be connected to, and the bottom, which cable can be connected to for power and data. Passive vents have one attachment point at the top and will attempt to equalize pressure between the atmosphere it is placed in and the pipe network it is attached to. If pressure is higher than the atmosphere, it will blow out that air. If the pressure is lower than the atmosphere, it will suck air in into the pipe network. Gas pipes have a max pressure of 60 MPa and will become stressed at 49 MPa. Stressed pipes will make creaking noises but otherwise have no effect. Going above 60 MPa will cause the pipe to take damage and soon rupture, ultimately leaking its contents into the atmosphere it is in. Pipes will also slowly heat exchange with the surrounding atmosphere. To prevent this, use insulated pipes. If you do not use insulated pipes, fuel may ignite inside of pipes, water may freeze, and bases may change temperature after each airlock use as the gases pass through the pipe. You won't have insulated pipes at the start, but that's okay because you'll only lose or gain heat very slowly. You can always upgrade later. Finally, we have the console and gas sensor blocks. The gas sensor has a single attachment at the bottom, which cable can be connected to for data. It sends general environmental data on the specific tile it is located in, a tile being one iron frame large. You can learn about what specific data it sends in the stationer's wiki. The console is the mastermind of the airlock. When built, you will have to insert a circuit board, which will dictate if the airlock is a basic or advanced airlock. After you install the circuit board, you will have to place glass over it, which completes the console. On the left side, there's also an empty slot for a data disk. Inserting the disk will enable the setup mode of the console, allowing you to designate which blocks the console has control over. Note that it can only see blocks that have their data port connected to the console's data port, located on the bottom of the console. Now that we understand the components, we can build our airlock. The first thing I do is place the console, and then the active vent. I insert the basic airlock circuit board and the data chip into the console. I then seal it off with glass. Now, I put the gas sensor beside it, and the passive vent inside my atmosphere facing up. Now we have to connect everything. Get some pipes, connect the active vent to the passive vent. Note that corners can go behind doors. In order to merge wires, you need wire cutters in the other hand. Make sure that both the data and power ports of the doors are connected, as well as the console, gas sensor, and active vent. It's also important to note that there's a switch on the side of the console. I've set up a temporary power source for now using the area power control block. The APC has two connection points, power input and data on the left and power output on the right. Once placed, you'll need a crowbar to open it up. Here, you'll see a slot for a battery and a breaker switch. Place a battery inside and flip the switch to power up the airlock. Do not loop the output into the input as it will draw infinite power resulting in your cables bursting. This is known as a short in circuits. Finally, with the chip inside of the console, you'll notice it is in setup mode. The green text indicates what object the console is looking for first. In the case of our doors, the first door we click denotes the exterior door. And notice, when I click it, the text becomes interior. Now we click the interior door, active vent, and gas sensor, and now we can remove the data chip to exit setup mode. Now we have a fully functional basic airlock. If you become trapped, it's probably because we haven't pressurized the inside of the base yet. Hit cancel pressurize to open up the door. There are two things to note here. The emergency override button is currently broken and does nothing. And the active vent data slot does nothing and thus can be used as storage for the data disk in case you want to set up the console again. You can pressurize a base by emptying any gas into it into a minimum of 20 kPa. I would do this by emptying my oxygen tank into it.
Now that our base is pressurized, we can test out our airlock. You'll notice it works quite well when we depressurize. However, if we try to go back in, it won't be able to pressurize, and that's most likely because the pressure of the base is far too low. You can hit cancel pressurize with almost no issue. Just be aware of things that might fly into the airlock when the air comes in. Now I'll cover advanced airlocks. I have switched to Mars for the advanced airlock. The advanced airlock only needs three additional items, another active vent, another passive vent, and if you deconstruct the console, an advanced airlock circuit board. Both active vents are on the inside of the airlock with one passive vent on the outside and one passive vent on the inside, denoting exterior and interior active vents. Make sure to label the exterior active vent, the interior active vent, the exterior door, and interior door. Set up the console just as last time, with exterior first, vent and door, and then interior second, vent and door. And then the gas sensor. And you notice it'll work. You'll notice two new settings at the top. These are the pressures the airlock attempts to reach before opening. I personally set both of these to 0 kPa so that the airlock is faster. Doing this will tell the airlock to not pressurize again, which could result in items flying in your face when you open it or you slamming into the walls if you have a high pressure environment. All you have to do now is take out the data disk and cycle. It'll empty and then open. If you're going out, then the interior vent will suck all the air in the airlock into the atmosphere. If you're going back in, the airlock will take all the air in the airlock to the outside. And now we can demonstrate our fully functional airlock. Thanks for watching. Please let me know any questions you may have, and I hope I explained everything concisely so you can build your own airlocks.